Hi guys, Bajonis here. I just wanted to talk about my personal practice spreadsheet because I really like this concept of documenting your practice so that you can track it over time and see how you make progress, what kind of strats you do, what kind of consistency you have. Because what I've realized as a horribly inconsistent player is that I'll be able to practice stars all day and I think I got it down. I think I've got it, you know, I might be able to do it like a few times in a row even, but then it comes to a run and when you mess it up, you wonder why. And you feel like you practiced, you practiced enough at least that you shouldn't be messing it up or you wouldn't have been very likely to mess it up. So I'm wondering like, how likely is that? So that's why I created this spreadsheet to really go through and figure out how to get better. So this spreadsheet, I started out in June of last year. It's about eight months old at this point. If you can see my earliest, this is my earliest, um, that's my earliest spreadsheet entry is June 28th. And to be honest, <laughs> that went pretty well. Like, I'd still be happy to get an average 7.1. Like, that's pretty good, you know? Because sometimes you can get, like, a 7 flat. Sometimes you can get, like, a 7.4 on that star. I don't know. It just seems like you can't get it perfectly every time. You know, you can have some, like, 7.3s. As long as it's not, like, 8 seconds, I'm fine. But that was really good. And I also did Talons just down here somewhere. There you go, which is actually pretty bad. Nowadays, I pretty much average like a 16.8 or 16.7 doing the normal strat. So if you see like my best was 1683. That's like what I average nowadays. And 75% isn't that great consistency. But that was a really long time ago. If you scroll over to now, I did 95% consistency average. Wait, was that actually my average? Oh yeah, I think I included like some really bad ones, but definitely capable of getting like 16.7s most of the time. And if you go to shining top of the pyramid, it's about the same. So let's actually talk about how it works because this is the point of the video and I've been kind of rambling. I decided to group everything by c category. Like, first of all, how long it is and how difficult it is. So, my difficulty ratings were, you know, very rough. I said simple, tricky, and hard. Long, medium length, and short. So, medium length is anything between like 15 ish and 30 ish seconds. So long stars that you see like 100 coins or Bowser stages, but there's a couple like, I guess like board Bowser sub, chip off Womps block, I kind of put in the long category. Like long plus simple here. So I decided that I want to do cycles where I want to go through every star in a couple of months, which obviously I'm only on the third cycle now, so I didn't really adhere to that as well as I would have liked to. But I go through each star and I document it and then I go back through it a couple months later. So if you do this like over a year, if you can get through like four of these, you actually have a legitimate trajectory of everything that you've done for that star over time. So what I decided to do was write down the date because the date's important. See how long ago it was. And then I decided that the most important metric was my 20, one, was my 20 try percent. Some people like to do something like 10 times in a row. That's like the Lunar Jump special. But I decided that 10 times in a row, it can actually be kind of fluky. Like you might get it like 60% of the time total, but once you get it 10 times in a row. And that doesn't mean you're done, right? So I say, my current method is like, once I decide I'm starting the spreadsheet, I can do it until I get one that's acceptable. And then that's number one. And then I have to do 20 in a row. And no matter what, if I fail it, then that's an F. And failing is obviously very subjective, but over time I hope to 
increase my criteria of acceptable performance so that like initially losing three seconds on a medium lane star isn't usually going to be a failure but eventually it will be because i can't afford to lose three seconds on every single star that's more than 10 seconds long but at the moment the idea is that not only do I increase my overall consistency is I bring my average times down and then what I aim for this is the key this is the most important thing about this spreadsheet is this row right here good consistent time and now I even added two good consistent time and ideal consistent time and I wrote down a quick description here what I said for good consistent time is with a reasonable margin for error, how fast can I usually get it done with, you know, not trying to go fast. I'm just trying to do it steady. I want to make sure I get it. If I do it and I do it well, what time can I aim for in a run? That's the key aim for. What am I aiming for? I'm not just aiming to do the star. I actually have a specific time in my head that I'm trying to get. That's the overall goal. And that's going to be a huge mentality shift for me that I've yet to really accomplish. And then I added ideal consistent time as what is the absolute best I could do without adding risk by like trying to go too fast. And in the past, that was what my good consistent time was. But then I decided like I need like a an acceptable and a good, but I just made it good and ideal. Just a bit of nomenclature. And I also wanted to give myself a grade because sometimes they overperform. So I want to give myself like an A or I underperform. I want to give myself like a D or an F, you know, for like <laughs> that guy, like 65% for his fortress. That's not good. So I just want to keep it in a little bit of context because obviously I'm going to play well on different days at different things or better at different stars. So I got through one cycle of this roughly over the summer of 2018 and then it took me a while to actually get underway with this one. And what I did is I only got through everything downstairs. I didn't do anything upstairs, but at least got to do a second cycle of everything. So now, as soon as I got my EverDrive, I realized if I'm going to get a 49 by pace, which I'm recording this on February 17th, that's like two months or so from now, not very long, I need to be going hard at this practice cycle. So I started on, I guess this might've been the first one or 125, there we go, January 25th. And I've gone through pretty much through Lethal Lava Land. And it's been kind of hard with school, but I want to get like this whole thing done by the end of February and then through March and April, I want to get a second cycle done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these columns, move this guy, my like actual table over. This is just like an average calculation and then do it all over again. And then like maybe in a year or so I can actually make like graphs of stars and see the statistics, but that's not really the point. The point is that I improve every time and really try to get overall consistency with like 20 no reset attempts. I actually get, I give us a one mulligan where it's like, come on, there's no way I'm going to do that and run. That's just so tilting. I can just hit level reset once. I give myself that so I don't go crazy. Uh, I record my best X cam because I want to see like, what was my peak? What was my average? And then these are my arbitrary definitions. And then that actually gives me a range. So for instance, lethal lava land reds, I want to get a 14.3 or 14.4. Longer stars is going to be a bigger range. Let's go to mid length. So, shoot talent in the sky. I want to get like a twenty. Actually, I should put I should put that as like a nineteen, but that was like about a month ago when I was just learning the new strat. So it's definitely giving myself something to aim for in particular when I do runs. So that way, I'm not going to be like one of these players who sometimes has good movement but is actually really slow and sloppy. I want to be looking like a player who plays at a high level, who actually plays with 2019 strats and 2019 level movement. <laughs> That's the idea. So thank you for watching and 
maybe you'll try doing something like this yourself and I can't wait to see if this is actually the future of Mario 64 practice.